Welcome back to YouTube. I'm Ahmed again from In Depth Tech Reviews, and here's Google Apps Updates Roundup number 36. In this episode, I'm going to share with you a lot of new exciting changes that took place in October 2021. In my previous video about how to get the Pixel 6 Live wallpapers and the magic eraser on older Pixel models, some of you couldn't get them to work properly, so I'm going to show you how you can fix those two issues. But for now, let me remind you to subscribe to the channel to help me reach my first 100k subscribers if you are really interested in the content I deliver. So without further ado, let's jump in. I will start with Google Photos and after showing you how to install version 5.64 ported from the Pixel 6 to get Magic Eraser, Google pushed an update through the Play Store to version 5.65 and this one doesn't include the feature. But thankfully I got my hands on another variant from the same version that will give you access back again to Magic Eraser and also give you the new Google Photos widget shapes. So let me show you how you can do this. The first thing you need to do is to head over to in-depth take reviews slash downloads. Under Pixel 6 apps, tap on Google Photos. It will take you to the mega website and then the download button will appear right here. Once downloaded the app, make sure you have split APKs installed on your phone from Google Play Store. Then open split APKs and tap on install APKs. Choose any of the file pickers right here. So I'm gonna choose the internal one and then I'm gonna head over to the download folder and put a tick next to the APK I just downloaded which is Google Photos version 5.65. Then tap on select and then install. I already talked about how the magic eraser feature works. So if you want to check it out, click the link showing now on the screen or in the description below. And now let's move on to the rest of the features. After installing version 5.65, when you try to add the Google Photos widget and then you choose your Google account, you will get six different shapes to choose from. The first one looks exactly the same like the clock widget. So let me show you how it looks. And you can also resize it the same exact way. You can make it so big or so small like this one. And here are four more new shapes to choose from in addition to the original one. There are two more small differences between version 65 and 64 under the sharing tab. First, the shared album button is now located at the top and it has a pill shaped design. And there is one more new button here called share with partner that doesn't exist in the previous version. Finally, this card looks different and it has a different wording as well. And when you go to search, and then tap the search bar, you will see a new horizontal line that separates between the search and the rest of the page. And there's a new card at the top with a hint saying grouping photos by people helps you find loved ones faster. From here, you can tap on learn more or dismiss the card. Now let me show you more changes that you will find in both versions. The first one, when you try to edit a photo, you will see a new more tab here at the end. This one includes any apps you have on your phone that can edit your photo. So for example, when I tap on OneDrive, it will give me the photo editor of OneDrive app and so on and so forth. And finally, when you try to edit a photo that includes the sky and then jump to tools, you will see a new sky option right here. Tapping on it will give you different filters to change its look and also an intensity slider. Now let's talk about the new Pixel 6 wallpapers. In my previous video, I showed you how to install them on your older Pixel model, but unfortunately for some people, the Bloom category didn't show up on the phone after installing the APK. So if you are impacted by the same issue, I'm gonna show you two workarounds. The easiest way to solve this problem is to jump to settings, then apps, then show all apps, and in the search type live wallpaper, you will see pixel live wallpaper here, then tap the ellipses button and uninstall updates. Once done, head over to the split APK app and follow the same instructions I mentioned before to install the APK one more time. And I recommend doing this two to three times. If you're still not getting the Bloom category under the wallpaper and the style app, then we need to move to the next workaround. The second workaround requires a PC to be able to uninstall the current version of the Pixel Live wallpaper, which is something you cannot do on the phone itself. So if you don't have a PC or not impacted by the issue, you can skip to the next chapter. Now we need to make the phone ready to accept ADB commands. Step number one is to go to settings and then go to about phone, scroll all the way down to build number and tap on it seven times until it says developer options now activated. Then under system, you will see developer options. Just make sure you have USB debugging activated. On the PC, we need to download the SDK platform tools. I'm gonna leave its link in the description below. This page will show you three download links, one for each operating system. In my case, I will download the Windows version. Then I will go to the location of the downloaded file, right click on it, and then choose extract all and hit okay. Windows will automatically create a separate folder for the extracted files. 
go inside this folder, then go inside the second one, which is called platform tools, and then take a look at the text field at the top, delete whatever written here and type CMD. You will get the black command prompt window ready to accept ADB commands. Now connect your phone to the PC using a USB cable. And if you're doing this for the first time, you will get a message asking you to allow access. If you don't want to get the same message in the future, just check the always allow box and then hit allow. To make sure your device is detected by the platform tools, just type ADB space devices and hit enter. If it showed your device serial number, that means you are ready to apply the command. Step number two, you need to type ADB space shell. And when you hit enter, you will see a dollar sign before the cursor. Now we need to type the command that will remove the Pixel Live wallpaper app from the phone. If you tried to copy paste it here, it will not work. You have to type it manually. So let me do this really quick. Once you hit the enter key after typing the command, you should see the word success. By this, the PC part is done. Head over to the downloads page on my website one more time and tap on live wallpapers under Pixel 6 apps, download the APK and then one more time open split APKs to install the file. And by this you will see the bloom category under the wallpaper and the style app like this. Now let's talk about material you and the first app I'm going to show you today is Google Translate. As you see, it looks totally different now. The buttons are bigger and colorful to match your device theme. The language picker is now located at the bottom instead of being at the top for easier access and the page got a complete redesign to match material you. To access your history now you need to swipe down on the text field and hide it by swiping up and instead of having it showing automatically on the front page which is better for your privacy. The microphone button is now front and center. We still have access to conversation and camera from the front page but the transcribe option is hidden. On the newer version, you need to tap the mic first and then you will see transcribe right here. The hamburger menu is now gone and it got replaced with the profile picture. From here, you can access pretty much the same options. The only difference here is the phrase book item is no longer showing, but you still can access it by tapping on the star button at the top left corner. And when you translate text on the fly from your recent apps screen, Google Chrome or whatever app you want, you will get a totally different floating card. So let me show you how it looks. First, it's much bigger than before with more rounded corners and that makes it easier to see the text and scroll through it instead of having this very small space. We used to have an ellipsis button next to the translated text that includes copy and open in main app but now the copy option is no longer hidden. And it's also available for the original language, not only the translated one like before. In the newer version, when you tap on new translation, it will give you a paste button to paste whatever you have in your clipboard, which wasn't the case before. And there is also a clear button that does exactly the same thing as new translation. So I'm not sure why it's included here. And finally, here is how it looks in dark theme. Next, the recorder app with Material U has a much bigger record button. Tapping on it will change to a rounded rectangle and it looks exactly the same as the one we have in the clock app where you can pause and resume. Also, there is a new pill shaped fill color around the audio and the transcribe tabs. Other than this, they work exactly the same, but you will see everything looks different now to match the new design language of Android 12. It's also worth mentioning that the app now can transcribe more English dialects. So when you go to transcribe and then tap on the language, you will see Australia, Ireland, Singapore, and UK, in addition to the original one, English US. And some people started to see more languages like Deutsch, French, and Japanese, but I didn't get them yet. And here is how the Google Recorder app looks in light theme. Next, Google Play Store got material use support and it looks exactly the same as other apps like Google Photos, for example, with the same navigation bar at the bottom. The search bar is smaller with more rounded corners. On top of this, the sub tabs at the top are also matching the device theme instead of using the old green accent color. In contrast, when you go to any other page, you will see the same old design. So I will go to manage apps and device. Here we have the same green accent color, check boxes, and also the buttons. So it seems like the front page is the only thing that got redesigned. Beside Material U, Google is also collecting votes for the best Android app in 2021. And when you tap on this banner at the top, it will show you the nominees. There are 10 different apps that you can vote for and the voting will end in 13 days. When you vote for any, you will get a thank you message and then it will ask you if you want to vote for games as well. Later, if you changed your mind, you can cancel your vote. 
and choose another one. And here is how it looks in dark theme. Next, Google Meet with Material U now matches the device colors with more rounded corners for the buttons and picture-in-picture -picture window. And here is how it looks in dark theme. And the last app I have is Pixel Tips. And here is how it looks in dark theme. Now let's talk about the new widgets and the first one I'm going to show you today is under Google Drive. It's called Suggested Files. Here I have it on my home screen. This one will give you quick access to your suggested files from here. When you tap on any of them, it will take you right away to this file in the app. You can also start a new search or upload a new file. The best part about this widget is you can make it much smaller without losing any buttons. Next. Google Chrome got three new widgets. The first one is called Chrome Dino and the two Chrome Shortcuts widgets. The first one will take you to the Dino game so you can start playing right away. The other two share pretty much the same shortcuts. One will take you to Google Lens. The second will start a new voice search. The third is for opening a new incognito tab and to finally start a Google search. The bigger one has the same shortcuts in addition to the Chrome Dino. And none of them can be resized or aligned on the screen. And finally, Google app got more designs for the weather widget and a bigger one with more information. Starting with the original one, now it got three different designs based on the size. Here's the first one, this is the second, and finally, the third. The other widget will give you much more information compared to the previous one, but you can also resize it. Here is the large size, this is the medium, and finally, the small. The at a glance widget of the Pixel Launcher also got a new feature. When you go to customize, then tap the gear icon, you will see a new toggle here called commute and the time to leave, which didn't exist before. Now I'm gonna talk about some random changes across different apps and I will start with YouTube. When you go to explore, you will see different icons at the top. Also, there is a new dedicated trending button. Tapping on it will allow you to see the trending videos and also filter what type of trending videos you are looking for. You have now music, gaming and movies. Music will take you right away to YouTube music app and the other two are exactly the same but they have different icons. Next, the clock app. And when you set a new timer, now the label is located at the top left corner and instead of showing inside the circle and if you have multiple ones, you will see a slightly redesigned pagination dots. And the stopwatch looks different. Now the minutes and seconds are stacked on top of each other instead of being next to each other like before. Under bedtime, when you go to sleep sounds and then tap on choose another sound, you will see a redesigned page. And when you go to your bedtime activity, tap the ellipses button, then manage data. There is a new toggle here for YouTube. When you turn on this one, YouTube will notify you if your bedtime schedule is started or ended while watching videos. Previously, this option used to be under YouTube only, but now it's located in the clock app. And when you tap on the word YouTube, it will take you to the same settings page where you can adjust the feature. Next, the calculator app got a new haptic feedback. When you expand the history, you will get one with the first swipe and another one when it's fully expanded. And the same will happen in the opposite direction. Next, Google Lens. And now when you try to search any image, you will see all the available options right away. And instead of only suggesting few of them based on the image, plus they are now using text and instead of icons, which makes it a little bit easier to understand. The phone app also got some visual tweaks. First, the small white bar at the bottom of the screen is no longer showing and that looks a lot better. And the call button in the keypad looks different. It's now narrower and taller than before. Next, Google Assistant driving mode can now be activated automatically based on certain conditions. To do this, head over to Google Maps and then jump to settings, then look for navigation settings and finally Google Assistant settings. This page got a new section called launch driving mode that includes the same option we used to have before, which is when navigating in Google Maps, but we got two new additions. The second one is called when connected to cars Bluetooth. And in this case, you can choose to launch the driving mode automatically, ask before launching or do nothing. We also got another option here called when driving is detected. And in this case, you have the option to do nothing or ask before launching. Last but not least, if you are a Pixel user, when you go to the wallpaper and the style app, then a change wallpaper, you will see a new category here called community lens that includes some cool wallpapers to choose from. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new changes in Google apps that I wanted to show you in this episode. Please let me know in the comments if I missed anything. So I hope you like my video and if you do, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.